Arizona Life is Spiritual presents the Erica Documentary, Part 7. My name is Bamboo, also known as Tim, also known as Baba Zion and Baba Zoe. And I'm here with my beautiful wife, Erica Mukisa Kimani, Kimani. also AKA known as... Mama Maisha O oh, Mami Zion. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Yeah. And we're bringing the continuation of the Erica Documentary series. This is Part 7, and we were talking about... The giants. Ali giants, aliens. We are talking about um, symbolism. Symbolism. We're and talking about messages and the unholy trinity. Yes. 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 Mm. So, uh, I think we should just get right into it. Yes. Yeah. So today we are going to uh, talk about giants, as we promised in the previous documentary. Yes. We we had planned to talk about it in the previous documentary, but because of time, yeah. we couldn't. Uh, yeah. So today we are going to talk about the giants. Uh, most of you have heard of the Nephilim and the giants. Uh, we are also going to talk about uh, the fallen angels and how man was mixing with these fallen angels and how they produced giants. But before we go there, I want my husband to uh, talk about it in Genesis 6 because Jesus also mentioned it. And he said that in the last days, it will be as it was in the days of Noah. So we need to, to first know what the Bible says about it so that by the time I'm explaining to you what I went through, it's very uh, easy for you to understand and relate with the Word of God. Amen, amen. Mm. So referring back to Genesis chapter 6, mm. these are the days of Noah. Yes. And the Bible says from verse 1, mm. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, mm. and daughters were born unto them. Mm. that the sons of God mm. saw the daughters of men, mm. that they were fair. Yes. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Mm. So let's break that verse down a bit. Mm. Sons of God, in the Hebrew translation, that phrase, sons of God, is the benai e Elohim. Elohim. Yes. yes. So the benai Elohim are not human beings. Mm. Those were the angels. And they, they had were, been named after Elohim. Yes, because yes. Because I remember uh, Clewo used to call God Elohim. Yes, okay. yes, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. So the Benai uh, Elohim, mm. the sons of God, mm. saw the daughters of men. So we know that sons of God is different here from daughters of men mm. because it could have been that, that they were also, you know, sons of men. Mm. and daughters of men. Mm -hmm. Those would have been ordinary human beings. But the Bible makes a deliberate distinction mm. between the sons of God and the daughters of men so that we can understand mm. that these benai Elohim were not human beings. Yes. But they took wives of them, of mm. all which they chose. Mm. And verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, mm. for that he is flesh. Mm. He is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and 20 years. So that's when God set the limit, the boundary for man's years yes. to be 120 years. But mm. before that, they used to live even longer. Yeah. Um, so verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And mm. also after that, mm. when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, mm. the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Mm. You know, in some translations, they call those mighty men, those mm. giants, mm. those hybrids, they called them heroes. Yes. The heroes mm. are also called the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Those Nephilim are, or heroes are what we are seeing with the movies that we see nowadays, yeah. Avengers and uh, Spider-Man, Spider and we're seeing uh, the mutants, we're mm. seeing Hercules, mm. we're seeing Achilles in the mm. movie Troy. Power Rangers. Yes, who are these people with special powers? Who is Superman? Who, mm. is, who is Batman? Who are mm. these people who have apparently uh, powers that are superhuman? Mm. These are heroes. Mm. Well, it is these heroes that first appear in Genesis chapter 6. In other words, what Hollywood is showing us is some of the things that are coming, some of the things that the, the kingdom of darkness is preparing to bring in these last days. Yes. Yeah, so yes. So when they show up, people people will be will have already been programmed to receive these things. And it will not be 
uh, like shocking to them. Yes. They have already been programmed to receive these beings. Yes. Mm. They are using the method called desensitization mm -hmm. to desensitize a person. It's, it's just to basically keep on showing them something on, mm. on television mm. or on a screen mm. before you actually introduce the real thing. Mm. So that by the time you introduce the real thing, the shock is gone. Like death, they've been showing death so much in movies to a point that if somebody dies, now people are not shocked. It's, right. it's something that they are, they are used to seeing. They show death uh, in news all the time. They show death in movies all the time. So it gets to a point that, okay, yeah, a person will feel bad when somebody dies, but it's not shocking. Yes. It's something that people are used to, to a point that, uh, in Kenya recently, a woman uh, drank poison and the man was recording. He felt nothing about it, like just right. recording his wife drinking poison to a point where she died. And yes. it's, it's not alarming, you know. He's recording everything, literally, on camera. Yes. So that's, uh, these are some of the ways in which the kingdom of darkness functions. And I, saw, I saw his same face, that same DJ, I saw him on a poster. Mm. And in the poster, he's throwing up the, the 666 yes. sign and he's so, throwing up two of them. Mm. And I saw that and I said, man, do these guys know what they're doing when they're channeling that kind of energy? Mm. Do they know what they're doing when they're channeling uh, the spirit of Antichrist? And, mm. and another lady just, you know, killed her child and started eating, devouring the yeah, intestines. Yeah. So where is this coming from? Where is this spirit coming from? This is that 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 death spirit and i think it's really introduced through what people are viewing mm. on television mm. when you watch movies that are full of death mm. full of killing yeah and you become desensitized to it it's yes. not it's not as shocking anymore so <laughs> now you can go out and see a dead person and and, and not be moved with compassion for that person mm. and when that becomes the norm you are eroding the social fabric of society. So they're preparing people for these giants. Yeah, it's generational. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in, in our during the time of our parents, yes. this, the things that are happening in our generation never used to happen. Yes. But because we grew up uh, watching, <clears throat> we, we grew up watching um, uh, these horror movies and all that, it's, that's the reason as to why you see an increase in death. Now, for our children, what Hollywood is programming them for is the alien invasion, yes. uh, giants, yes. uh, robots, yes. uh, pedif pedophilia. Yes. Uh, they are programming them for, for sexual abuse yes. and things of the kind. So when we see them so much in their generation, it's not something that should shock us. It's, we should know that this is what they have been programming people for. So it gives intercessors uh, reason to pray and, and also guidance on how to pray for this young generation. Yes. Because if we do not uh, possess uh, the gates as, as a church, then the enemy will take over. He will start uh, doing whatever he feels like doing at will. So we need to sensitize people and, and make them aware of the kind of content that they are consuming because life happens from us, not to us. Right. We always say uh, garbage comes in, garbage comes out right yes right. Mm. so um in the fourth verse of the same chapter uh chapter six of genesis mm. the bible says and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that mm. when the sons of god again benai elohim came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown mm. so these giants or nephilim or heroes, mm. superheroes. Mm. Of course, you can imagine a child that is born a normal size, but then it just continues growing mm -hmm. and growing. Mm -hmm. For us, for normal human beings, uh, a certain hormone kicks in which prevents you from growing after you reach a certain height. Mm. But that hormone is withheld in these in these Nephilim. Yes. So they grow up, you, you see a person 10 feet, 15 mm -hmm. feet, 20 feet tall, mm. 30 feet tall. Mm. Like, how do you deal with such a being? Mm -hmm. And God saw that, the Bible says that God saw, 
in verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, mm. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm. In other words, when God looked at the heart of the Nephilim, mm -hmm. all he saw was wickedness and evil. Mm. There was only darkness in him. Mm. No light existed in him mm. continually. And can I amaze you? Uh, when I spoke about the eye gate that we entered with Satan, yes. and then I met with Abaddon. Yes. There's something that Abaddon, Abaddon is a fallen angel, and I'm going to describe him. But there's something that he said. He said that the fallen angels cannot access, they cannot access our, our territory because we have a veil. We have something that is covering and hindering them from penetrating into our territory. Yes. So what they have decided to do is to mix with the daughters of men and they have been given children. And those children are on this territory. They are living with us. Yes. But the reason as to why we are not seeing them is because they have been given safe places and they are being protected by the governments, different rulers of this world. Yes. So there are some places where human beings are prohibited from going. That right. is where they are raising these Nephilims from. And whatever you're seeing in, in movies, like in Hollywood, uh, they showing you Nephilims coming right. all of a sudden from nowhere. Just yes. know they have been around. But what they are trying to do is to prepare us for their coming. Right. They want, uh, and those Nephilims have been helping these uh, people to open portals. So what they are trying to do, as uh, you saw through Sun, they are trying to open portals so that they can find a way of releasing these fallen angels onto our planet yes. so that they can unite with their children. Yes. And when they come, they are not coming in peace. Yes. They are coming to take what has been given to us by God. As a matter of fact, when I met with Abaddon, where I was in their city, because the, where the fallen angels stay is not where the demons stay. Yes. The demons are like servants. The fallen angels take themselves to be princes. Yes. So they behave like royalty. So um, what Abaddon uh, showed me is there are some angels that have been chained because of their wickedness. They are even dangerous to, to the fellow angels. God has chained them and they are in pits. Yes, the yeah. Bible speaks of those. Yes, mm -hmm. so he was telling me that even those angels are dangerous to, to, to angels. But what they want to do, what these people are doing, they don't know that when they open the portal, even those angels that God chained, imagine if they are harmful to fellow angels, how harmful can these angels be to human beings? So they are, uh, he showed me where they were chained. He showed me uh, there is a, 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 a place there where they have uh, buildings, and these buildings have different logos of different companies. Wait, wait, wait. In Jude chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, mm. the Bible says, And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, mm. he has reserved in everlasting chains mm -hmm. under darkness mm. unto the judgment of the great day. So, so as, those are those angels. Yes, as they are opening the portal, they have no idea that they are releasing even the angels that God forbid to mix with the fallen angels. He has even, our God is so kind that <laughs> he even protected the fallen angels from their other de dangerous From angels. some that are even worse than worse they are. Than, yes. In than other words, are. there are levels of criminality here. Yes. There's levels of evil. Yes. And there are those angels that are worse than the fallen angels yes. which God has kept. Yeah, and they have, they have this uh, anger towards humanity because every time we pray, we send fire in the, in the pit of hell, fire. In, we are setting fire to these angels. So when they come, when they are released, they will just be coming to revenge. They're coming for vengeance. And they are coming for, for, for the children of God. Those that have been sending fire are the yes. ones they are targeting and they want the blood of the saints. Do you know they are repeating that same line of, of narrative? They're repeating that thing in movies. Yes. There are movies, that, there's a movie, we'll, we'll play the clip. Mm. But... That movie is called Troll, and it mm. shows a Christian praying. He mm. can hear this giant is coming, and he mm. starts praying. He starts saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. While he's holding a crucifix, he's holding a cross on, his, on, 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 a, on a chain. 
Mm. And that giant gets him. And eats. And eats him. But right before he eats him, the other man looks at him and says, Christian. Yes. and puts him in his mouth, and the giant swallow eats him. So, you know, Hollywood knows what they're doing. They know who they are collaborating with. Mm. I mean, I'm sure not all of them know, but the inner circle. Mm. I mean, who, who could write that script? Mm -hmm. And then I'm talking about Abaddon. People have to know that Abaddon is a giant. He's not uh, my size. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I saw Abaddon, I, I, the environment there is, is full of heat and then it is not bright the light i can describe is like the light in a club where you're able to see that uh so and so is dressed in a red outfit or that is so and so this is where i have to go i i, I you know just dim light and then the other thing i i witnessed while i was in that world that world is hot like you hold know, on hold on Explain the circumstances. How did you get to that place? I explained how I got there in the documentary. We entered through the eye gate. The first time I, I, I had an encounter with Abaddon, we entered with Lucifer through the eye gate. Okay. Yes. So now through that eye gate, I found myself in a place where there are giants. And these giants, they like places where there are mountains, hills, trees, like isolated trees. You know, they like those kind of places. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I noticed is they are not being fed by God anymore. They feast on human beings. Human mm -hmm. beings are their food. And then they also like uh, eating, f I don't know why, but they like eating flies. You know, like uh, the way you see a crocodile yes. uh, opening its mouth and yes. all the flies falling on the tongue and then eventually shutting its mouth. Yes. That is how those beings are. Yes, the, even Beelzebub, Beelzebub is, is the lord of the flies. Yes. And then the other thing I noticed about Abaddon, because I, now from that time, the, the devil introduced me to him. I started now meeting with him because the introduction is just uh, making people meet. But now when I'm being sent for assignments, sometimes I would find myself meeting with him. I realized you explained to me what kind of angel he was because he had six wings. The other thing, he had four faces. Abaddon. Abaddon, yeah. He had, a, he had a face of a lion, a face of an eagle, a face like a man, yes. and a, a face uh, like an ox. Yes, like okay. an ox. Yeah. We so, see those in the scriptures. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then sometimes he would shut the four wings and only fly on two wings. And okay. Abaddon had the ability when he's flying, he's going for destruction. He would spit fire. And everything that is like, if he decides to spit fire, he, he destroys everything. He doesn't leave anything standing. Wow. That is the ability that he has. He can function in the air, he can function on land, and he can function in water. And he told me that he's the commander of the army forces of hell. Let's look at, let's, let's look in, hold that thought. Let's look in Revelation chapter 9, because that's where we find him in the scriptures. Mm. And the fifth angel sounded mm. from verse 1, And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Mm. Now this star that they're discussing is, a, is an angel. Mm. And those angels act under the instruction of Jesus. It's Jesus who has the keys of mm. death, hell, and the grave. 
So if he has released one of the angels, which was the fifth angel here, mm. then this this one opens the bottomless pit, mm. at which is, I believe, uh, CERN. Mm. CERN, which what you were discussing, the, the portal that they're portals. opening. Yes. Not only one, they are still opening portals. There's many of them. Yes. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit mm. as the smoke of a great furnace. Mm. In other words, that place... That place where they are, that place is like a furnace. Yes, that it's they, hot. It's hot, huh? Yeah, just like you see a fan. It's fanning cool air. Yeah. There, you just get the heat. So, to can a point you... that you, I, I, you, the first time I met with Abaddon, I wet myself and I dried immediately. Oh, you that is some serious humidity. Dry. You sweat and dry. So, can a human being survive in that condition? Those conditions were not meant for human beings. Okay. So it's not possible for a human being to survive in that condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as a smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So that place is dark, full of smoke. Yes. A pit like... <laughs> like I described uh, how I saw the first stage of hell, it was smoke that was full of explosives, but burning. You know, yes. that burning smoke with with sound, like things are exploding. Wow. Yeah. Verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts mm -hmm. upon the earth, mm -hmm. and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. I saw, they sting. Uh, Abaddon took me to, to the laboratory where I saw insects, and he told me that this was, he stings a person, and the person... Uh, can be in pain for like five months. Wow. Six months. Do you know what? Those those scorpions are detailed here. Wow. And it was commanded them, verse 4, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Mm. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Wow. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. When a scorpion strikes. Yes. So the you pain, know, the I unbearable pain. I was called pain. And a scorpion. Yes. 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 I, I, I always tell people that stage names have meanings. Yes. I cannot just wake up and, and call myself something without an inspiration, you know, yes. without a cause. Right. So verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Imagine death itself running away. Mm. Death is a spirit. Uh, yeah. So imagine if that spirit runs away from you, then you then you, you can't die. That means the pain is too much. It's too much. Yeah. And verse seven, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, mm. and on their heads were as it were they had, they had this you know, like, have you seen a grasshopper? How yes. they are, they have those big legs, but these yes. ones are bigger version of grasshoppers. Yes. And they are just ready to go. And Abaddon showed me there were so many. There were so many. I cannot even tell you the number. They they keep them in laboratories. In the millions? Or in the... Many, they keep in the even billions. breeding them, breeding them, breeding them, breeding them, breeding oh. them. So when they open the portal and they start war, they are going to release. People don't know that they are working against themselves. They're working against themselves. By opening the portals just for a few shillings and power and influence. A few dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, people, you see, that's the thing. When you look at the dollar, you look at the symbolism there, they are telling you that what they are building is a reoccurrence of Genesis chapter 6. Yes, that the whole world, world, yeah, the whole world is heading towards Genesis chapter 6 mm -hmm. again. In fact, the book of Revelation is a repeat of Genesis chapter 6. Mm. So if you are not serving the Lord, then the sum total of your financial activities are working towards the fulfillment of the new world, of the new world order. Jesus said, he that is not for me is against, against me. me, and he that does not gather with me scatters abroad. That means that there's no wiggle room here. There's no, there's no oh, I don't want to be involved, or I'm just a good guy, I'm, I'm a nice person. There's nothing like that. Mm. There's only... Either you're with Christ or you are against him, you know? And if you're for him, there are certain things that you'll do. Mm. 
and your life will be committed to him. So the sum total of your activities will be for the kingdom of God. Mm. But if you are not, then the sum total of, of your activities is for the kingdom of darkness by default, mm. whether people know it or like it or not. Yeah. yeah. So, and verse seven, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. With so those, that's the, the way they go. Yeah. You know, have you seen a, uh, a, a loca, grasshopper? A grasshopper, a, yes. Yeah, and the legs and the, the legs that stick up. Yes. Like an elbow. Yeah, and they can <laughs> fly. They can. They are good on 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 ground. Yes. They can fly, and they are also good on water. Wow. Now look at these 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 locusts are not ordinary. They were like horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. Yes. And their faces were as the faces of men. Look at a grasshopper and just imagine it with a crown. Yeah. Yes. And then the face of a man. Yes. It, it has a face that looks like a face of a man. If you look at a grasshopper, <laughs> just look at it. And they had hair as the hair of women, mm -hmm. and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Mm -hmm. And they and had Abaddon also has teeth like a teeth of like teeth of a lion. I told you he has a face of a lion. Yes. So he can devour. He can eat. He can just put one human being in his mouth and that's it. He has a face of a lion. Yes. He has four faces, four right? Four faces. So do they look in different directions simultaneously or does he transform into those four he different can faces? He transform and he can just decide to to look in all dimensions simultaneously. So they look, one is looking north, the other is looking south, the other is looking east, the other is looking That's west. That's if he wants. But uh -huh. if he wants to wear one face, he can wear one face. So he can transform if and appear like a man. If you find him looking like a lion, just expect the lion treatment. If you find him looking like a man, at least, finally, you can try to talk. Yes. If you find, yeah, he's, he's in different uh, uh, faces. And they had hair as the hair of a of women yes about and their teeth were as the teeth of lions mm. and they had breastplates mm. as it were breastplates of iron let me explain that better you see the place where they are is hot so as a result of the heat their skins hardened to a point that if you punch him you can end up fracturing your hand they don't feel anything yeah their 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 bodies are so strong like iron yeah so these are people that when he's Steps on you, just imagine a, a heavy a piece of iron landing on somebody. So their weight is heavy and their skins are hard. Wow. And they had breastplate, breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. Mm. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots I of many you, horses running to battle. Abaddon has wings, six wings, but he always prefers to use two because he feels like he will use the rest of the energy when he comes. He's so eager for the portals to be open. And he told me that he has many children and his children are in a safe place. They are being protected by the people that they are affiliating with. And he has wives, people that they, they have mixed with. And yes. those people are the ones that are pushing their agenda the satanic agenda. They are the ones who create policies. And those are that. those mothers of darkness that yes. you hear about. So. Yes. This, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Mm. And they had tails like unto scorpions, mm. and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Mm. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, mm. whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but mm. in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Yes. So that is him. So now, after I met with this Abaddon, and I'm seeing the wigs, I'm seeing the, the hey, Abaddon's leg, you're taller than me. But when you meet with Abaddon, even his leg is way taller than you. So this is a giant. So he's uh, how many stories in, in terms of a building? Maybe two, three, four, five story building maybe the size of the Empire State Building, or maybe Just how let me big? explain to you how I was. Uh -huh. I was like a bottle of soda height compared to this thing. 
<laughs> you see, even the children of Israel saw the giants and they said, we are like grasshoppers. In their sight. In their sight. Yes. These things are huge. Yes. They are not joking. They are huge. They are huge. I, when they are walking, you literally feel the ground shake when they are walking. When they are breathing, you feel like, you know, I don't know how to explain. Yes. When they talk, they talk like in a, I don't know how many bases. Deep the voice base. is deep. When they are roaring, you just feel like, hey, I'm finished. I don't know how to explain, but it's, it's something that any human being would not want to, to like, encounter. Like when the children of Israel had left Israel, uh, I mean, Egypt, mm -hmm. from uh, 400 years of bondage, being led by Moses, they were to go into the promised land. Mm. But they went to spy out the land first. Mm. And different, you know, spies came back with different reports. Yes. So the Bible says in the book of uh, Numbers, 13th chapter, mm. uh, verse 30, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Mm. Verse 32, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. Mm. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Mm. And so we were in their sight. Yes. So that's how I was in Abaddon's sight. <laughs> but I just thank God. By the way, he did not allow me to go and interact with the other angels. He said, mm. I'll be eaten. Because human, human beings are looked at as food, especially when you're not even in God, especially yeah. the way I was, I was not in God. So any any angel would have eaten me and not have answered to anybody. For yeah. some reason, I think it's because my mother was interceding for me, these angels could not uh, eat me. So I advise parents, even if your child has strayed and they are giving you headache, just intercede for them. Don't curse them. If my mother had been cursing me and saying because of how you're treating me, you will see, you, you will pay for this. I would have paid by being eaten by these beings. But through her intercession, God somehow came through for me. He protected me. You know, he did not allow these angels to eat me. Rather, he allowed them to expose themselves to me so that I can come out someday and expose them to you. Yeah, so... I uh, meeting Abaddon, he told me that he's the head, he's heading the army forces of hell. And what they are trying to do is to expand their armies because the battle that they are going to fight is, is going to be a great battle. There is a, a battle that they are looking forward to. Armageddon. Yes. And that battle, he told me that there are all kinds of angels, like with all powers and all forces and all glories, you know, yes. they are so strong. So they need to collaborate with human beings. And how they can trust human beings is when they change their DNA, one. And secondly, is when they turn them into machinery. Like there are some things a human being cannot do. Like so they want to turn us into human robots. Yes. And then the other thing, that's why you see the, the like Hollywood uh, uh, acting uh, half humans, half robots. They are going to tell people that if if you want to get stronger hands, we can give you these metallic hands. These hands can do this, this, this. The advantages. Cyborgs. Yes. So they want to create supernatural beings, beings that don't die. That's why they are creating bodies. Uh, where they can transfer a human being in that body. And when you're tired of that body, you go into another body. They are trying to run away from death to create a situation where these human beings cannot die. And you know what? They're going to succeed. Because yes. in Revelation, we saw that these men were run away from death mm. and death was fleeing from them. Yes. Yes. So 
uh, the other thing he told me is that uh, they they also have they also have uh, beings uh, that they are working with, and these beings can they are dragons. They spit fire. They they are destructive, and uh, they have a kingdom in space and and in the waters. So they are, they have the air force, the land force. And the water force, but Abaddon can function in all in all forces because he's the commander of the hell armies. He's so, like amphibious. Yes. So he wants men who are robots. He wants robots themselves, mm. men who are half men, half robots. Mm. He wants to work with dragons. He wants those uh, those insects that you were talking about, the locusts, right. and he and they, the fallen angels. They are not little in number. We talk about a third of the angels, but there are many. I saw many. And there are some that God had chained in the pits. So imagine all of them coming together and they are fighting. There is a battle that they are preparing for. That's what he told me. Right. And that's the reason as to why they, they want to... Why, he told me why they need man is because through man they can get God. Man is part of God. Man is in God's image. Yes. So by studying man, by collaborating with man, they have hope that they can use man to bring down the kingdom of God. They will not succeed. They will not succeed. We already know what it says at the end of the book. They are destroyed. And all of those souls and all of them whose names were not found in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. So this being Abaddon, Mm. He is in a class of angels called the cherub. Wow. The cherubim. Mm. The cherubim have six wings. Mm. They have four faces. One, the face of a man. Two, the face of a lion. Three, the face of an eagle. Four, the, the face of an ox. And eight eyes. And they can transform. Mm. And they have abilities which the Bible does not even, you know, elaborate all of the abilities that these beings have. Mm. But we know that they are of some of them are of the archangel class mm. that means that they had access to the throne room dwelling in the presence the heavy presence of god mm. so these are beings that if they are corrupted they mm. can do damage they can yes. do a lot of damage mm. now the access that they will have i think it is to the extent what is what god is doing is that He's going to allow man to do what man wants to do. Mm -hmm. If man wants to open the door for Abaddon, do you know what? The Lord is going to say, do you know what? Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will learn to value obedience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because the Lord gives men the desires of their heart, if that is what they seek, that is what they'll get. Mm -hmm. And if man is so corrupt that they're willing to accept a salary to do evil, to do what they know in their heart is wrong, mm. they are going to reap what they sow. And now, you know... These beings are going to damage uh, this planet because these beings are so damaging. Just imagine what is going to happen to the water bodies once these beings come. And they are not just a few. There are so many in number. And imagine what they are going to do uh, to the food, to plants, to animals. And eventually, when everything is finished, they are going to go for human beings. They'll start eating human beings. And now human beings will want to defend themselves. So they will turn themselves into robots so that they can get uh, an amount of energy that can fight at least, you know, to defend themselves. So human beings will turn into food for these beings. And they will be in pain. They, have, they will have turned their bodies uh, to become Im immortal. You know, they will not be dying. So they will be in pain, you know, and yeah. those that have not turned their bodies or their DNA into whatever these beings want them to turn to will be eaten if they are not in God. Right. Yes. Yes, because those beings were allowed to strike anyone who did not have the seal of God in their foreheads. Yes. So the Bible speaks about when the Son of God is coming, when He will return. Mm. And the Bible says that uh, in Matthew 24, verse 36, but of that day, speaking of the second coming of the Lord, mm. 
of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, mm. but my Father only. Mm. But as the days of Noah were, mm. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm. For as in the days that were before the flood, mm. they were eating and mm. drinking, marrying mm. and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Mm. So, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, those things happen every day. Yes. So what's so special about this eating and drinking? What is so special about this marrying and giving in marriage? Yes, it, it, it's, 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 uh, it has something to do. Later I discovered, because I mentioned the eye get, I discovered that this eye uh, worship is very meaningful in the occult. And then I, I also discovered that they, they, like the way they worship these deities is through homosexuality. Because if you look at the, the eye of Osiris, yes. I, I mean the eye of Horus, if you look at the eye of Horus, the way it's designed, it's designed like a rectum. Yes. So these Satanists believe in sodomizing children of eight years and below. They believe that these children have, they have energy, they have life, and they can use those children to open, open portals and mix with these beings that God forbid us from mixing with. Okay. So, uh, and they know very well that those children, Jesus says, let the little children come to me because such is the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah, so the enemy wants to defile anything that God is interested in. And mm -hmm. God looks at the children because of their innocence and their purity. Yes. These children are able to see in the spiritual realm. They are able to do things that adults can't do, but mm -hmm. we despise them m many times because of their age. But now these sorcerers know the energies that are in these children. So they want to take advantage of them, use them and leave them empty. Right. Still everything, still their destiny, still their life, still everything, and just leave them empty so that when they grow, they are, they are like wasted children. And also, I think when you, because sex is a covenant, yes. they are covenanting these children. Yes. And if they are covenanting these children, spirits are entering also in, in, into these children. Yes, so they'll be useless. They'll so be they'll, slaves. Grow, they'll grow up to be the same thing. Yes, they'll be slaves. And uh, they also believe in sacrificing children from eight and below. That's why you see it's so big. In America, children are disappearing at a high, at yes, a high rate. Yes, absolutely. We uh, see 460,000 children disappear every year. That's mm -hmm. around 2,300 children disappearing per day. Yes. So that is, that is child abduction on an industrial scale. That is about f around six stadiums full of children disappearing every year. Six mm. football stadiums mm. disappearing every year. Mm -hmm. So that's 2,300 per day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of children. Yes. Where are all these children going? And the bodies are not being found. Uh -huh. I sent you a video of uh, 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 Biden's son. He had, he had a tattoo of maps, of a map. And uh, when they researched, they saw some spots where children are being trafficked, uh, like on the, and, and the ch child trafficking was on the increase. And only for this uh, gentleman to have the same map on his back tattooed. Hi, did you miss me? Saw a video clip earlier, kind of reminded me of something I want to share. Biggest busts of accused sex traffickers. And now 18 people are jailed and charged with sex trafficking and rape involving a child. Yeah, you heard that right. 18 people, one child. Crime took place in New York, specifically around the Horseheads area, but this is what caught my eye. Man, look at those, look at those lakes. Look familiar, don't they? That's right. Hunter Biden has them tattooed on his back. Kind of raises the question as to why your presidential son and someone at the heart of so many investigations has a child sex trafficking hotspot tattooed on his back. So these people are involved in trafficking children in, in, pedif in pedophilia and they, they are, that's why you see they are pushing 
the yes. LGBTQ agenda. Because they want uh, to normalize or legalize uh, pedophilia because, yes. and they're calling it minor attracted person. Yes. Map. Yes. You see like Alistair Crowley, he has books. He was uh, one of the most wicked men that have yes. ever existed. Yes, they called him the wickedest man that ever lived. Yes, this man has a book uh, uh, titled Sex and Religion, Magic, Sex Magic. And right. there he, he encourages these people to, to sodomize uh, children because in sodomizing them, they can open up portals and, and have access to certain dimensions in, in life and have dominion in those areas. Let's say if, if you tap into the dimension of manufacturing cars, yes. you have dominion there in that business. Nobody can out you because you come up with new ideas from the aliens, from demons. They give you new ideas, but those things come with a price. They have to sodomize. It comes at the, at the expense of the lives of of these little innocent children. So he, he, in a year, sodomized 150 boys. He writes, he notes down everything in his books. Mm -hmm. He sodomized 150 boys. And he said he got that appetite when he saw, uh, uh, he saw these aliens when he was being sodomized. So he realized that he could actually open up portals. And in, that was in 1946 when he opened up his first portal. Right. And in 1947 is when uh, he, he, they were able to bring aliens or demons on this planet in, in 1947. Right. So they continued and they've been opening up portals. It has been continuous. That's why I was able to meet with Cleo. So interestingly, 1947, the very following year, the following year we have uh, Roswell. Yes, the whole they, they act that movie of Roswell, yes. showing how they were able to bring those aliens in spaceship. Yes, Roswell, USA. And then the, fo the, the same year, 1948, mm. we have the establishment of this country they call Israel. Yes, and even in 1982, they also brought some other aliens. So they keep bringing them. By this thing called homosexuality is so big in the occult. And if you look at this, if you look at the flag of Israel, it is that six-sided hexagram, yes. which is the most powerful symbol in the occult. Yes. Six points, it has six sides, mm. it's made up of six triangles. Mm. That's 666. Yes. And many Christians have no idea because they, they love to wear that symbol mm. as if it's the, the Star of David. Mm. When we read our Bibles, there's no Star of David. And this there's people, that Star of Moloch. They like so much uh, blaspheming God, things that will grieve the Holy Spirit right. because they want to break that seal that is um, hindering those other beings from coming and coexisting with us. Yes. Now, when you see them um, saying that their highest ranking is the 33rd degree, they do it for, for a purpose, and that plan is to blaspheme God because they believe that Jesus, well, you know, they are mocking yes. Jesus because they killed him when he was 33 years old. Yes. So in the, in, in, in the satanic kingdom, because Satan hated the Son of God, the highest ranking, when a person is fully filled with the spirit of Antichrist, that person goes to the 33rd degree. Yes, yes, they write often about, let's see, like Albert Pike was the Freemasons Freemason, meaning that all of the new Freemasons study Albert Pike's books. Mm -hmm. One of his books is called Morals and Dogma. Mm -hmm. In that book, he confesses openly that the God that they worship is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He calls him the son of the morning or the yes. morning star. He calls yes. him uh, the light bearer. Yeah, because the name, and it's true, the name Lucifer means light bearer. Era. However, what he's asking in the, book, in the book, he says, is Lucifer the light bearer? And then he says, the light that blinds feeble, sensual, and selfish souls. Mm. He, in other words, Albert Pike is saying that, that the light that Lucifer shines blinds feeble, sensual, and selfish souls. Mm. So you see, he believes that Lucifer has some kind of moral uprightness mm. that the world that does not have, or that Adonai, or that God does not have. Mm. So, 
And can you imagine now all of the other Freemasons are reading his books to become a Freemason in the senior levels. And he was a 33rd degree Freemason. But Albert Pike also started the Ku Klux Klan. I don't know if you've heard of it. In the yes. US, the Ku Klux Klan was a was literally a a terrorist organization. Mm. Killing black people all over the place and working all kinds of injustice, racial injustice. So you see where the Ku Klux Klan really comes from, where that terrorism really comes from. Mm. So when you look at Freemasonry, the 33rd degree, it is like we, like you said, a yeah. mockery that Jesus was slain on his 33rd year. Yes. Actually, their agenda is to oppose everything that is of God and to twist DNA of everything, not only human beings, but everything, animals, plants. You know, God created everything and he saw that they, everything he created was beautiful. And then yes. he rested after creating everything in his way, the way he wants everything to be. But what these things are going to do, uh, they've come through science. And science is knowledge without God. Yes. So now what they do is they create a hybrid of everything, hybrid of everything. That's why you find that even our president was complaining at some point that I don't understand what the pineapples, how the pineapples in America test, because you eat them and they have no test. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm used to the one in Africa, the ones I have in Uganda, because they, they have not yet been mixed up. Uh, you, you're hearing about this uh, agenda where they are, they are selling to us. Um, if, uh, if even our uh, uh, Kenyan president accepted. Uh, Monsanto. Yes. Yes. One of the, they control the world's food supply. Yes. And their intention is to sell seeds that are not reusable. Yes. So you need to come back to buy seeds from them every harvest. Yes. It's, a, it's manipulation, it's control. Mm. It's, and, it's that, and it's really, it's Genesis 6. Yes. Manipulating seeds mm. when God created seeds to multiply after their own kind, mm -hmm. right? But this is here, is, here is a company that forces the farmers to come back and buy seeds from them every mm. time. And the, and the fruit does not have any seeds in it. These are yeah. seedless. Yeah, seedless and then they things. don't have that test. They don't yes. have the, those... Uh, food nutrients that we are supposed to get. Yes, they the, want to poison the food. Yes, the they food want to supply. poison food. Yeah, yes. and they want to keep us bound to them, to the system. And we, and eating things that are carcinogenic, causing yes. cancers, causing, yes. causing all kinds of uh, 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 complications in the body. Yeah. So we need to go back to just the, the simple foods that God prescribed in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Because by avoiding some of these foods that are introduced by big corporations mm. that are only trying to, to make money, they, they don't care about your health. They They're don't. just trying to make money. Mm. It's about the bottom line for them. And they don't care about the future. All right. they care about is now. Because they know they don't have a future. Right. What future is it for somebody who knows that they are going to perish in the lake of fire? Right. They know that they don't have a future. And since they don't have a future, they want to, to live happily now because there is no future for them. Yes. But we, the children of God, know that we have a future yes. and that there is even life after death. Yes. Yeah. And they hate. Oh, how they hate Christianity. Mm. In fact, we'll probably play a few clips of just different movies where they are talking about, where they're just insulting Christianity, blaspheming Christianity, blaspheming Jesus. In fact, any other religion, whether you're Hindu, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Muslim, whatever you are, ask yourself, why does Satanist, Satanist Hollywood, Hollywood is so satanic and everyone knows it. Mm. Now, why are they only blaspheming Jesus? Mm -hmm. Why are they always hating on him? God. Doing and everything the in their power. Spirit. Basically, yes. because they will blaspheme the Holy Spirit as much as possible. The reason is they want to grieve him right. and cause him to vanish from the surface of the earth. Remember, Jesus said that I, although I live, I'm not leaving you as orphans. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving my spirit. I tell you the truth. God ain't never listen to no niggas' prayers. God take a niggas' prayers and throw them in the garbage. God don't pay niggas no mind. In fact, God hate niggas. Hate them with all the fury in his heart. Jesus don't love you, nigga. Jesus hates your black. 
to me talking about burning in hell. I am Optimus Prime, and this message is to my creators. Leave planet Earth alone. The time coming for you. Drop your weapon. What's in your hand? So uh, our, the Spirit of God is supposed to help us, to comfort us, to guide us, to help us grow in knowledge and understanding of the things of God. And now that is what the enemy hates. He doesn't want, a, he's not afraid of a church that is full of thousands of people. As long as they are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they are not growing, he's not scared of that. Right now, there are so many churches that are full to the brim, but these churches are not following God. Right. They are not being taken in the ways of God. Like, they are not following the Bible, the Word of God. Lukewarm doctrine. Yes, yes. false Tol prophets. Preaching tolerance. Their businesses. Preaching tolerance, and really, what are they tolerating? Sin, mm. tolerating wickedness, mm. tolerating LGBTQ, mm. and whatever is popular, going with the trend, following whatever is popular mm. in the day, doing whatever they have to do to get the masses to come in, because for them, it's not about winning souls. It's money. It's about getting more tithes and more offerings, offerings. and more seed. Mm. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 says, For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. Mm. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now, who lets that shall be taken out of the way? It's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit basically is that layer, that protective covering that you were talking about. Mm. That they want to, the occult, the wicked ones, they want to so uh, blaspheme and they want man to defile himself to the extent that the Holy Spirit lifts mm. because they have grieved him. Mm. And after they grieve him and he's lifted, he's, the Bible says, until he be taken out of the way already. Wait, the mystery of iniquity does already work. Mm. That mystery of iniquity includes so much homosexuality, mm. the spirit of antichrist. False prophets. False prophets. Mm. Inf infiltrating churches and, and preaching false doctrines. Mm. And we're seeing so much of that in Kenya right mm. now. Mm. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. Mm. In other words, at a certain point, the Holy Spirit will lift. And, that's and that is what they want. And I believe that's what Apollyon once, We're saying once that's the Holy wants. Spirit lifts, yes. the, all the portals will open. Yes. Hell will break loose and, and the, they will come in full swing. And the Bible says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the wicked, the wickedness, the evil will be revealed. It will come out upon the earth. It, they'll mm. come through their portal and begin their rampage of vengeance and destruction. But wait. The Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Mm. But in between that time that the Holy Spirit is lifted and the time that the Son of Man returns, mm. there's a space of time in there that is just, if, <laughs> if any Christian is lukewarm in their belief, this is, that, that is no time to be alive. That is no time to, You're to, either to hot be lukewarm. or cold. There's right. nothing like being, I'm, I'm born again tomorrow, I'm going to club the other day. Because when you're going to club, this musician is singing, I'm shining like a morning star. I'm shining like a morning star. And they're telling you to shake what your mama gave you. But they're they are really singing about uh, the morning star. And you've been explaining that Lucifer was the morning star. So these uh, celebrities, these secular artists, have sold their souls to the devil and they are worshiping the devil because he desired to be worshiped from the beginning he wanted all creation to worship him he wanted to to take the position of god he wanted everything that god has created even god himself to worship him and that desire has never left him so these people who have sold their souls to the devil are worshiping him 
in, in, in Uganda there are so many songs where they are talking about angel and they are worshipping him. They are worshipping an angel. Uh, or like Olimalai Kachikachi, what kind of angel are you? Wakorwa Mugululiani, which kind of heaven were you created in? They are worshipping the devil and people are just dancing. Uh, look, at this, look at this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm. That same verse. Mm. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. That mystery of iniquity is what was seen in Genesis mm. chapter. Actually, it's in the first chapter. It's in, it's, in, it's in the first chapter, and it's also in chapter 3, where God basically curses the serpent. Mm. And he says, I will put enmity between, between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Mm. So actually, I correct myself because I said that in Genesis 6, that's the first place where we see fallen angels mixing with human women but actually we see it in, in genesis. genesis yes in mm -hmm. genesis chapter from even the first verse it was the plan was already hatched and we see it manifesting in the third chapter mm -hmm. so god put enmity between the seed of the woman which is the church and the seed of the serpent so the serpent has a seed the serpent has children satan has children mm -hmm. and now this is what second thessalonians is calling the mystery of iniquity. He says mm. the mystery of iniquity does already work. Mm. That is, the mystery of iniquity was the strategy of the kingdom of darkness to mix fallen angels with human beings, to create a new race okay. of human beings. Explaining and what Abaddon said, that they have children. Yes. And the children are already living among us, but in isolated places. Yes. Wow. That's what they want. And they want the whole world. Satan wants the whole world to be filled with his own children. Mm. That is the new world order. Mm. They want to remove God's children. So the mystery of iniquity began to find expression through Cain. Mm. That's why Cain killed his brother, believing that Ebel was the Messiah. Wow. That's why he killed him. And all through, wherever you see the prophets being slain, it is that same spirit of Antichrist, the mystery of iniquity, slaying righteousness mm. or slaying the image and the likeness of God to remove it from the earth and to replace it with Satan's own children. Mm. So when you see the hexagram, you are looking at that spirit, that hexagram, the six-sided hexagram, is the geometric representation of the spirit of Antichrist. It has six points. Just look at the hexagram, six points. It has six sides on its inner hexagram. Mm. And then the hexagon on the inside. And then it is made up of six triangles. Mm. It is six, six, six. That's why the Bible in Revelations 13 says, let he who has wisdom count the number of the beast or the number of his name. And his name, in fact, let's just read it because is that important, is that crucial? And mm. people be able to make the connection between Revelations chapter 13 mm. and, and the hexagram. Mm. Wow. They need to be able to see that because if you can make that connection, then you understand why there is a hexagram on the flag of Israel. That has mm. nothing to do with Jesus, has nothing to do with David. Mm. You're making me understand, as you're looking for the scripture, you're making me understand uh, why Jesus reacted that way when he found that they had turned his house into a den of robbers. Nowadays you're seeing things like a man, man of gold, you know, gold mafia. You're seeing things uh, in Kenya. You see a false religion. Yes. Yeah, so it, uh, I now understand the angle at which Jesus came uh, maybe in, you know, he was, trying, he was trying to show us that this is a spirit of Antichrist against the church, against me. They are fighting me. Yeah. So they, they have turned my house into a den of robbers. Yes, exactly. Look at this, Revelation chapter 13, speaking of the Antichrist, who will come on the scene and he will impose his own financial system. This book was written thousands of years ago. So it's powerful. Is so powerful because the prophecy can foresee digital currency and that no one will be able to buy or sell unless they are in that digital currency system. Mm. So when you see central bank digital currency coming, mm. we know the Antichrist system, Bitcoin. the financial system of the Antichrist is coming. Mm. A system that will use, uh, like it'll be just like Bitcoin, but it will use blockchain. Mm. So anywhere you use money, the system saw where you spent that money how much you spend, 
And if you're spending money on something they don't want you to spend on, they can restrict your spending. Mm. They can restrict you from having access to your own money. Yes. Watch this. And he causes all, in verse 16 of the 13th chapter of Revelation, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, mm. and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, mm. or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Do you know what man that is? It is the number of a man. What man is that? It's that man is called Cain. Wow. Cain was the first to attempt to slay the Messiah, but it, Abel was not the Messiah. But the spirit of Antichrist assumed that he was and made an attempt to kill him. Mm. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Now, one score is twenty. So three score is two, uh, three times twenty, which is sixty. So his number is six hundred, sixty and six. Six, six, six. Wow. All right, so when you see that six, 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 you can see it also represented geometrically mm -hmm. with the hexagram. I believe that's probably why you saw your grandmother drawing a triangle, on, drawing a, a, a star. And that star. Uh -huh, on mm. the ground. Yeah. And then conjuring demons. Yes, and you, the demons would come. Those yeah. are the small portals that they open. Yes. Now, what they want to do is to open now the permanent portals right. where you don't have to keep drawing those things. Anytime you want to interact with the other dimension, you just go at will anytime. But now here in opening this portal, they do so much sacrifice, rituals and, and all those things yes. to, to be able now to interact with beings from the other side. So mm -hmm. they want to, to gain that permanent access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the Spirit of God right now cannot allow that to happen. So now we need the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says He's our helper. Right and our comforter, right? Mm. And our protector, mm. and our teacher, Yes. our counselor, our standby. He's doing so much mm -hmm. that often, even though the church takes it for granted, mm -hmm. the church often takes him for granted. Yeah. The amount of administration, the amount of work, the amount of protection, the amount of counsel, the amount of uh, leadership, and he sees everything. Yes. So just imagine every time the church betrays him, every time ministers betray the Lord, he sees it all. And these little betrayals or big betrayals, whatever, whatever the case may be, they are all contributing to him one day lifting from the earth. And then shall that evil be revealed. Are you aware that there are some pastors that are wedding gay couples in the church? This is what we're talking about. These things now are designed to grieve the Holy Spirit because Satan wants to bring iniquity into the house of God because that then will grieve the Lord. And he wants to bring this iniquity to Israel, the true Israel, not this Israel that you see in the Middle East, the true children of Israel, the true biblical descendants of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, who is Israel. Israel had 12 sons, and those 12 sons spread out upon the continent, and then they were, sh they were taken around the world in slave ships. But that's another topic. We'll get into that another time. But it is important because the enemy wants the children of Israel to be involved in Antichrist lifestyles. And that Antichrist lifestyle is homosexuality, LGBTQ. Why? Yeah. It's, it's, it, the, the, the rationale is simple. If I, as a human being, celebrate my own existence, then by extension, I automatically celebrate the union of my mother and my father. Mm. And if I celebrate my existence, I have a healthy worldview of myself. And if I celebrate the existence of others, then by extension, I also celebrate the union of their parents. Mm. And so that is a healthy worldview. Now, if an individual no longer celebrates the union of male and female, then he does not, by extension, celebrate the existence of humanity. Mm. He does not celebrate his own existence. And through a male and a male, you cannot procreate. Through a female and a female, you cannot procreate. 
Mm. And so what is going to happen? Depopulation, Satan, mm. which is Cain in operation all over again. It I, is the destruction of humanity. I saw a video of a woman marrying a dog. She was marrying her dog and they were exchanging vows. Yes. Uh, and, and it was a very... And you're, and you're going to see worse than that because this is just the beginning. What is coming is beings like chimeras. You know what a chimera is? A chimera is half human, half, half dog, yeah, half an animal. Something, yeah. And they are and they are creating these things in laboratories. It's not just human beings. And Shakira who are, who are sang about it. There are some lost human beings who are involved in bestiality, but they are creating these things in laboratories. The same mm -hmm. way they're creating viruses to afflict the world and then provide the solution. Yes. The same way they are they have no ethics. They have no there are no moral ethics in these people. Shakira sang about it in Hips Don't Lie. She said, oh boy, I can see your body moving, half an animal, half a man. Yes. And I don't really know what I'm doing, but you seem to have a plan. My will and self-restraint have come to fail now. I'm doing what I can't, but I can't, so you know it's a little bit hard to explain in a song. So, now, this is this so this is that antichrist system and if you look at the one dollar bill mm. the antichrist system is symbolized all over it in fact the one dollar bill is a hieroglyph of the system of the spirit of antichrist it is the financial system and is filled with witchcraft and sorcery symbolism it is filled there is nothing in the dollar bill that is about God or has anything to do with God. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing in that dollar bill that is for man. Everything symbolized in the dollar bill is for Satan, by Satan, programmed by hell and symbolizes this, the, the, the kingdom of darkness. And it symbolizes a new world what? order. Like I've been telling, talking to people about that, that symbol of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. First of all, people need to ask themselves logical questions. Mm -hmm. What is an Egyptian pyramid mm -hmm. doing on an all-American $1 bill? Uh, yeah. What does Egypt have to do with driving the U.S. economy? Mm -hmm. Well, that is the system of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh enslaved. And who did he enslave? Pharaoh enslaved the, the children, children of Israel. Yeah. All right, so if we have an enslaving system, a financial system that seeks to enslave not just Americans, but the whole world. Mm. Then we know that if we study some of the symbols on, on the dollar bill, then we can understand exactly where humanity is going. Because mm. all of humanity is working to obtain... For a dollar. Yes. Mm. They all have to buy their, their petroleum and they, you have to buy your, your gasoline or whatever in U.S. dollars. Mm. And if you don't, you might get Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. You might get you might True. get Gaddafi yes. if you don't buy your petroleum or sell your you oil in it. dollars. They threatened Museveni. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a, a worldwide plan that the, the America is spearheading this thing. Mm. And like you said, when you went to hell, you saw Satan sitting on a pyramid. Yes. And the only source of light in that place mm. seems to be like an from it was the eye, from the eye, the eye of Horus that was just above the pyramid, mm. and Satan was sitting on his throne mm. on top of that pyramid. Mm. All right. So th right there on the dollar bill, you see the throne and the altar of Lucifer, mm. the god that they are serving. So if the whole world is working to earn this dollar. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, write down the vision and make it plain mm. that they may run who see it. In other words, if everybody is working towards one common goal, mm. then everybody's, the sum total of everyone's commercial efforts are targeted in one area. Mm. And what is that area? It is written on the hieroglyph of the word of the, of the, of the $1 bill. Yes. Above the pyramid, it says Anuit Coptis, mm. which means he is pleased with our, our progress. progress. It is Latin. Mm. He is pleased with our progress thus far. Below the one dollar bill, it says Novus Ordo Seclorum, meaning new, new secular order. order. So who is, who is pleased with their creation of a new secular order? There you, Lucifer. I, yeah, you, you're talking about the symbolism now on the money. And it brings us to the Tower of Babel. Right. You know, when they were trying to build an altar 
where they can reach heaven yes. and God split them with different languages. So now they decided to come up with uh, with codings and with signs. Yes. And now we see that on the dollar bill and America yes. is having it on their on their currency. Yes, yes. And if you can, like we were saying, if you can understand symbols, you understand what the occult is saying. Mm. And the occult has put their symbols in plain sight for all of man to see. And mankind, because they have rejected Jesus Christ, they are with the enemy. That's mm -hmm. what Jesus said. He said, he that is not for me is against me. Mm -hmm. And he that does not gather with me Scatters scatters abroad. abroad. Yes. So if you are not working and serving in the kingdom of God to expand the frontiers of the kingdom of God, then by default, you are working just to feed your belly, to pay your bills, to keep the lights on, to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to sense. pay for your vehicle. So you are compelled of necessity to participate in the new world order. And now just imagine every human being that goes to work is working towards the fulfillment of this new world order. No wonder when Uganda said no to homosexuality, there were no funding. Yes, they they, will, yeah, no they take back their money. No funding. Yes. We shall not feed you. Yes. And then they are not supposed to feed us. Of course not. We can be independent, <laughs> but the system has designed it in a way that it enslaves all the people at the expense of just a few. And you know, when Satan is operating, there's always questions of integrity, always a uh, contradiction in terms. First of all, you're supposed to be a country that champions democracy. Mm. But by the same token, you are insisting that democratically elected leaders in Uganda mm. not be able to pass a law mm -hmm. that they feel represents the interests of their constituents. Mm -hmm. So you see, and the majority oh, of the Ugandans are saying no to it, yes. but you want to go by what the minority want. Yes. So in other words, there is no democracy. There's no democracy. Because so democracy the, is supposed to be for the majority. And that is the hypocrisy that is common in Satan. Satan is a hypocrite. He's the king of hypocrites. Mm. And you will always see hypocrisy in wow. him. He will claim to represent and champion human rights mm. on one side, but then on the other side, they're performing abortions. Mm. Almost 65 million babies dead through abortion since since the days of Roe versus Wade mm. in the U.S. when abortion was legalized in the Supreme Court in a case called Roe versus Wade. Since then, over 65 million babies slain. All right, where are the human rights for those babies? So there's no championing of human rights. It's just yes. hypocrisy. Yes. Yeah. And so, and they want to impose that same demonic, satanic hypocrisy on the whole world. Oh, wow. yeah. And if you look on the dollar bill, you'll also see the hexagram. That six-sided hexagram, you'll find it in Amos chapter 5 and verse 26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch. You'll remember that name, Moloch, because they sacrificed to Moloch. Hmm. The Bible says, and Chiun, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. So the star of their God is that six-sided hexagram. That's the star of Molech. And if you read Acts chapter, it's also in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Stephen, the first martyr who ever died for in the cause of Christianity, he died and was slain by the Sanhedrin. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they arranged to kill Stephen because Stephen came, he was healing, he was casting out devils, he was laying hands on the sick and they were recovering. I mean, this man began to do exploits for God. So they are organized to kill him. But before they killed him, they brought him in before the Sanhedrin to speak. Mm. And he begins to explain why they believe in Jesus. How from the book of Genesis all the way to their time, the Bible speaks about, Gen uh, about Jesus. The Bible talks about him. The, prophes the prophecies were about him. Everything from Genesis to that time of Stephen was about Jesus. And everything we read in our Bible is Jesus all the way through. Mm -hmm. Yeshua. So mm -hmm. look at what he says in Acts chapter 7. When he's brought before the Sanhedrin to speak, he says, Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Now Stephen is the one speaking here, and he's talking to the Sanhedrin, which are the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the elders in Israel. O ye house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices 
by the space of forty years in the wilderness, yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. You see that Moloch again showing up in the scriptures? Mm -hmm. And the star of your god Remphan, mm -hmm. figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Mm -hmm. So because the children of Israel were worshiping Moloch, the way you worshiped Moloch mm -hmm. was to offer him children. Mm -hmm. Moloch was worshipped by burning children. And that's what the children of Israel were doing. They had embraced the worship of Moloch and the symbol of Moloch was the six-sided hexagram. And so many different religions have embraced that symbol yeah. from Buddhists to Hindus to, to now even, even uh, people pretending to practice Judaism. When the, when the six-sided hexagram, the, the symbol of Moloch has nothing to do with uh, Judaism has and has nothing to do with Christianity. You're, you're reminding me of the pagan worship that is happening in churches. You see Christians celebrating Dinosaur Days. You see them celebrating Halloween. Right. You see them uh, celebrating Easter because Easter is the worship of Ta of Tammuz or Horus. Yes. Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris, and yes. they are celebrating Easter. Yet we are supposed to celebrate his birth, death, and resurrection every day. Yeah, with a righteous life, yes. with a holy life. Yes. That's how you celebrate it. But on Easter, you know what happens? They eat, they drink, they, they, they do things that actually Jesus did not die for. Right. And, and, they, and they, they celebrate it with, rab with rabbits and eggs. You know, what the enemy has cleverly done is that he has surrounded Christianity with pagan systems, pagan holidays, and he has given those pagan holidays Christian names. When you look at the Catholic Church, that's exactly what it is. Mm. It has a veneer of Christianity, but he has filled it with occult idolatry. For mm. instance, the veneration of Mary. When you see the statue of Mary holding a child, but that, we know that, that is not, that's not Mary, that's Semiramis, who was the wife of Nimrod. And Nimrod and Semiramis had a child and called him Tammuz. Then Nimrod dies. This Tammuz that you mentioned has one eye. He yes. was born with one eye. He was eye. born with one eye after the mother did all sorts of abominable things. To she slept him. with with Nimrod after Nimrod was killed. So she slept with a dead body. Right. You know? So so she produced in order to produce she, death, to she produce and reproduce. An abomination. So this Tammuz who came out, who was born of, uh, uh, you know, Semiramis and Nimrod. They, they talk about reincarnation, the coming back of somebody who has died. She did all those sorts of rituals, uh, uh, planning to bring back this Nimrod that has died. Now, she gives birth to uh, Tammuz, and then after she gives birth to Tammuz, she goes ahead and has sex with Tammuz. So, incest. Is in, that, is in that family. So when you're looking at this Mary, whom they supposedly venerate, the statue of Mary, and you see her holding a child, you see the child is almost being intimate with the mother. Yes. You see the child holding the mother in, in strange yeah. ways. And in some photos, some pictures, this same Tammuz is holding a globe. He's mm. holding a ball in his hand. Mm. That, that ball is the globe, mm. the globe of the whole world. Mm. And so behind this worship, part, part and parcel of this worship, part and parcel of the veneration of Mary mm -hmm. is the worship of Semiramis yes. and the, her son, Tammuz, who, with whom she had an incestuous re relationship that produced children. Yes. So just imagine how many people calling themselves Christians are bowing down before this Mary reciting Hail Mary every time um, and and they have to recite. I don't know how many times they recite it, but they use the they use the uh, this necklace that they wear. The rosary. The rosary, right? And it has beads. And mm. So you count the number of beads, and that's how many times you recite Hail Mary. Mm. Yet Jesus gave very specific instructions: Do not be like the pagans, for they think that because of their repetition of things that they will be heard. Mm. Instead, when you go to your father, just speak to him normally as a, as a son or a daughter speaks to a father. Mm. But these ones feel that they shall be heard because of their repetition. So he was, he was actually pointing to what will come and what pagans were actually doing. 
for to communicate with false gods, you have to repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again. Why? Because part of their aim is to brainwash you, to have a to build a stronghold in your mind so that you'll never escape. This explains uh, why, even if the church is supposed to be powerful, there is no power these days in many churches. And then, as a result, they start now faking miracles. And they start also deceiving people, you know, uh, to, to show power. They have to do all sorts of things like miracle money. Uh, or, or it, it's just now like a church right. has become a theater. They are now entertaining people because there is no manifestation or expression of God's power. Right. God cannot, he cannot mix himself with such craziness. And abominations. abominations. Falsehoods, lies. Yes, pagan worship. God, God cannot be there. So now they are trying now to, to make people comfortable. It's now customer care in the church. They have to make you feel at home, feel, feel comfortable, register you, register your number, your address, so that when the man of God is prophesying, he can prophesy accurately. They go on Facebook, they get details, because now it's not about building the spirit. It's more about pleasing the flesh, making you feel at home, prophesying about things of this world. You travel nations, you go, the, you go to these places, you have, you have prosperity. money. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Mm. Jesus knew this, this uh, pagan Semiramis worship mm. of idolatry would cross over and, and present itself like Christianity. Mm. He said, when you pray, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Mm. So do you see somebody repeating every, Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Who's this speaking? Jesus himself. Mm. Yet they say they follow Jesus. Mm. But if you follow him, you must do his word. You must do his will. Mm. He said, For they think they shall be heard, for they are much speaking. Mm. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask Him. Mm. So, all of these uh, um, pagan, idolatrous um, religions of the world, they all trace back to Babylon, mm. to Semiramis, to Nimrod, and the so-called Tammuz. And that's why even the symbol of a T to be perfectly honest, the symbol of a cross or the symbol of a T represented Tammuz. Tammuz yeah. yeah, that was their symbol. So even when they were crucifying Jesus, what were they doing? They were crucifying him or they were hanging him on their symbol. Mm. Because what, the one they worship is this incestuous son of Semiramis. So the one who God sent, they sacrificed him on their symbol for mm. Tammuz, which is... Mm. Just the, the worst, just says, the most blasphemous wickedness that you can ever imagine. No wonder the Bible says that cast is he that is hung. That hangs upon a tree. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. So when he hung on that cross, when Jesus hung on that cross, indeed, he took the curses of mm. sin mm. from humanity. He mm. took everything upon himself. Yeah. Yes. And died and went into hell with all of those the consequences of sin sickness. and curses and separation from God, mm. all of that. And glory to be to God, he, he rose on the third day. Mm. So even though they slayed him on the symbol of their God, mm. he overcame their that God. God. He, he overcame, overcame Tammuz. Tammuz. So we should have nothing to do with pagan worship. You, exactly. We should have nothing to do with idolatry. But the only way you can do it is to, first of all, become knowledgeable about the things that you're celebrating. Okay, what does this celebration have to do with Jesus? Ask yourself that Halloween. question. What does that have to do with Jesus? If it's Christmas, Christ, Mass, okay, do we celebrate Mass? What does Mass have to do with Jesus? I can understand if families want to gather and, and enjoy themselves, but if you want to be devout, if you really want to follow after Christ, mm. then ask yourself, what are these holidays? What do they represent? And mm. should I be involved? And to what extent should I be involved? Can you mm. imagine how many people are depressed around Christmas because they're they spending all their money place, or they, they don't, don't have food. they don't have new this they don't have it's all it's strictly materialistic i don't i didn't buy my children this or i didn't buy my wife this. and if the wife gets no present on christmas because things 
are not going well, imagine the amount of depression and sadness. It's purely materialistic. So these things have everything to do with the God that is being worshipped. And the enemy wants to divert us from the reason as to why Jesus died. That's why you see celebrities acting with, a, you know, a crown of thorns made out of diamond, uh, Jay-Z acting, you know, the Last Supper with everything. At the Grammys. At the Grammys. Exactly. They, they why why blaspheme to, Jesus? Why to, blaspheme him? Why, would, why do they hate? Why does Hollywood hate Jesus so much? Especially, we overcame them. Yeah. And Especially, we as, overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of, of our, our testimony. testimony. And if, if it is true that the Twin Towers during 9-11 were brought down by Muslim extremists, mm. then shouldn't they be blaspheming Islam? Mm -hmm. Why would they blaspheme Jesus? What did Jesus have to do with the falling of the Ten Towers? What does Jesus have to do with any of the misfortunes that Americans may be facing any, anywhere? Mm. Well, it has everything to do with the fact that there are only two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of darkness is fighting mm. tooth and nail against the kingdom of God. And Jesus, Yeshua, is at the center of that kingdom. Then that brings us to this uh, all seeing eye still, because we are talking about symbolism. This all seeing eye or the eye of, of Horus is so important in the in the occult. This uh, eye is not just an eye. Right. Actually, it, it symbolizes the rectum. Okay. And the rectum, you see, the enemy wants to, to defy the order of God, is putting life in a place of waste when yes. they are practicing homosexuality. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we also see these people who have joined the occult, how they come out, you know, there is what, what they call uh, uh, humiliating ritual. Now, humiliation in, ritual, yes, yes. In that humiliation ritual, they have to show that they have bowed to the eye of Horus. Yes. And how do they show that? They come out with a black eye. Jay-Z did so. Many celebrities have come out with a black eye to show that they have bowed to the eye of Horus. And how do they bow to the eye of Horus? They are sodomized. So that sodomy ritual, uh, you actually mentioned that Aleister Crowley um, he abused many children. 150 children 150 in a year. 150 children. So, and he opened a portal. Yes, and in 33rd degree Freemasonry, it appears that the way that they open that portal is by sexually abusing Sodomy. boys. Yes, who are eight. Around eight years of age. Below. Yes, but this eight, I don't know why the enemy is interested in eight, because even me when I was eight, that is when my first initiation took place. That is when I was taken to the grave, and that's when I got out of my body. That's when I started astro projecting at eight. So there is wow. something about eight. I think during that time, a person is now moving from from being a child to being a youth. Yes, actually, it's a new the, beginning. The age of maybe. accountability, according as far as God is concerned, the mm. age of accountability is seven. Mm. When you reach seven years of age, mm. when you pass seven years of age, you can be held accountable for your sin. Wow. You can be held accountable for your wrongdoing. Yes. So, if this child is no longer innocent at the age of eight. Mm -hmm. and can be held responsible or accountable. And this child, obviously, what is it, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. They might try to tell somebody, but now if the whole, if, if, if the person who is doing this to you is so powerful, is, is a very senior politician, is a powerful politician, or is somebody who is like, you know, 33rd degree Freemasons are usually very senior people in society, mm -hmm. high level politicians, senior ranking delegates, you they know, do it captains of industry. Mm. Yes. They do it to them and, and, and leave them depressed and suicidal. So these children end up committing suicide. Now, when they commit suicide, that is a sacrifice to their god, Moloch. So right. they don't mind about these children. These children is life after that incident. Whatever they do is to destroy themselves because they have been possessed. My their goodness. lives have been opened up to satanic attacks. Now, this, this say Moloch, it is, you know, ever since Roe versus Wade, that, that court case where they legalized abortion in the U.S., mm. 65 million children have been killed in yes. America through abortion. They've mm. been murdered. Mm. And so Moloch has received 65 million 
bodies over of children, of well over, because that's because just even an in estimate. Africa, that is in America, but in Africa, oh, no, too oh, much. yeah, that's just America. Now imagine around the world, but now the sacrifice to Moloch and the financial system is also driving it because the 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 occult is what powers the black market. And so if you look at the black market, ch child ritual sacrifices, children disappearing, 460,000 children disappearing every year. Where are these children going? And where is, and, and combine that with the other numbers of children that have been slain through abortions. Moloch is receiving, he, that means that the kingdom of darkness has an insatiable appetite for human life. Mm. And they have to keep on feeding this beast and mm. feeding it on an industrial scale. Mm. It is consuming humanity. Mm. And they're having a hard time keeping this a, a secret, secret because scandals are coming out like Pizzagate. Yes. Yes. Yes, can I tell you something that, that, that will shock you? Uh, there is a celebrity that is known for trafficking children in Africa, and that is Madonna. And I when read you look, about that. When you look at what happened recently in the Grammys, she was one of the people who was awarding uh, some celebrities for choosing a wrong path, uh, going extreme or going the opposite way. And when you look at Madonna, she has been acting pornographic, like in pornography, sex. she has been releasing sex videos and she's known for for trafficking children and she traffics them so that they can be abused if you look at the son she adopted the son is looking like a woman dressing like a woman the son is, is yeah he, he has been changed into 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 like he's not himself Yes, of because course. Because there are so many rituals that are performed on these children, these innocent children. They go to Africa and uh, lie to their parents that we are going to give your children a better future. Kwanzaa, they are taking their children for these rituals, satanic rituals, to these pedophiles. Now, we were, when we were saying that the, the dollar bill is filled with that occult symbolism, symbolism of witchcraft, but you can actually see Cleo and you said that that alien thing that you met after... and Alesta Alesta that Alesta Chloe Chloe Crowley Crowley <laughs> Alesta Crowley uh, the first time he opened a portal he was able to see uh, to to see an alien the first time he saw an alien is yeah. when they were sodomizing him that's why and do you know what when you look at the freemason's apron eh? he wears mm. they wear an apron on yes. the front yes and if you look at the apron you'll see underneath the uh, uh, it looks like an envelope right yes. the apron yes. looks like an envelope yes and then there's a v mm. now inside that v there's an image of an eye mm. that looks like a son yeah and that is that that, that is that rectum that is, that is the, the rectum, rectum. Yes. yes so there are, in other words the energy that they steal the innocence that they steal from an eight-year-old child or from an infant it's that is the, the energy rectum. yes that's what they steal they steal the innocence of the child through the rectum so this the is life is stolen through the the destinies are stolen through the rectum the energies are stolen through the rectum and the and the and the child is left a possessed, confused, depressed, empty, suicidal. useless, suicidal. So this is this is the beast that is you know controlling this world, and its appetite is voracious. It is insatiable, and they feed it every day, and they keep it covered. They keep it concealed, mm. and every time a scandal should come out, the news media, which is also controlled by them keeps it covered yes they cover it so this thing this we live in a dark world this world is dark so by the time jesus is coming to destroy every to destroy this world and those that participate with wickedness when he's coming to destroy it he's justified he is so justified in destroying this wickedness. So these uh, so-called people in the LGBTQ community, when they are putting on t-shirts with the word, we exist, I hope they understand what they are representing or pushing for. Because you said also, at, uh, in, I don't know whether it, in one documentary, you say that uh, the Antichrist will be gay. He will have no interest for women. Yes, yes. He's, this, this Antichrist is like... 
He's like Tammuz. He's it's the return of Tammuz, Tammuz. right? Yeah, Horus. So, so yes, also called Horus because there's also they they have uh, many names. They have many names for yeah. him, but in in the time of Babylon, when Nimrod was building the Tower of Babel, he was building uh, a, an altar, really a yes. portal that would usher in or that would allow in the 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 these forces of darkness which God has banished mm. into their own dimension. So Nimrod wanted to open that portal. God saw what he was going to do. He said no. He mixed up their languages. As a result of mixing up their languages, they scattered, but the occult decided to communicate through symbolisms just in case God confuses the languages again. Yeah. So they won't ever have to communicate through. Uh, and we already explained that in, in the last, in the last uh, documentary. But now we see Nimrod, Semiramis and Tammuz. That's the unholy trinity that they that they forced you to recite when they when, were baptizing you. Yeah, and I started seeing things differently. Everything was inverted. Yes, and I started now behaving like a tomboy, dressing like a boy, yet I'm a girl. Yes, and uh, opposites. wanting to heartbreak men and fighting men. The union of opposites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, What's right is wrong. What's wrong is right. Yes. Well, the boy is a girl, and the and girl, girl is, is a, a boy. boy. Yeah. And good is evil. Mm. Evil is good. Up is down. Down is up. Yes. Uh, that's the reason as to why every time I start in any video, I say Erika Mukisakimani because I know I was not supposed to be married. I say AKA Mama Maisha because I, the enemy had programmed me not to have any child. Oh, Mami Zion, because that alone is a testimony. If you're doubting God, at least he has changed my life and you can see it. It's a testimony. I was not supposed to be married. I was a tomboy and I was supposed to promote the LGBTQ and I was supposed to work with big organization, uh, organizations and I was going to receive a big funding for that. Now, you know, this same Cleo's image is on the $1 bill. Yes. I will show it. Yes. We'll make sure they see it. Yes. It's it's right there. You can see his eyes. You can see how they manipulated and uh, the the eagle mm -hmm. to form his eyes mm -hmm. and and his forehead. And in the middle of his forehead is that six sided hexagram, that occult symbol. Mm. So this is why we want people to know the meaning of these symbols. Mm. Not so that we can glorify darkness, but so that you just look around you and see how this wickedness has infiltrated your cities. True. How it's all over the place. It's on television, it's on your, it's on your currency. It's, it's, it's in your schools, it's in the education system, it's, it, it, it's in healthcare, it's, it's all over the place. And so, as one begins to be more, to be more aware of these things, mm. you cleave to the Lord now. You mm. cleave to him, you'll say, oh Jesus, Mm. Not that you'll walk in fear, mm. but a righteous indignation should arise in you that will make you bold with the gospel mm. to tell the untold, mm. to teach them, to mm. preach to them, to make disciples of men. He didn't say, go ye into the world and make Christians. Mm. He said, go ye into the world and make disciples. Not go ye into, into the world and make spiritual children. Yeah, he didn't say that. Jesus said, call no man your father upon the earth, mm. for you have one father, mm. even God. Mm -hmm. So all of this spiritual fatherhood is what makes it possible for a false prophet to thrive. Mm -hmm. Our aim as ministers mm -hmm. should be to preach the gospel, make disciples, mm -hmm. but not disciples of our own, disciples mm -hmm. of Christ. Yes. Let them follow the Lord. Yes. So give them enough information that they can safely follow the Lord by themselves. They don't need the minister to hold their hands. You've been saved 10, 20 years, still holding your hand. This is, mm. this Praying is for you. stunted growth. Yes, this is, and you know, a great deal of us suffered it from it. You know, we suffered the ah. same thing. We suffered from the same thing because the, the part of the objective of the enemy is to infiltrate the church and he has done a, a job of it. He has really done it. He's mm. really, he's, he's really infiltrated the church with false prophets. And, um, you said when you were in the kingdom of darkness, Satan had Bible schools. Yes. He had Bible schools and he was training people on how to 
mix the word of God with other doctrines and also you can mix it with herbs and, and, and also sell some items, things like that to to give people shortcuts. Giving uh, giving holy water. Yes, holy salt, holy, holy salt, candle, buy candle, candle for this, candle yeah. for love, candle for Can, romance, so, candle. So buying different things from the man of God. Yes, buy for buy customers. an anointed prayer shawl, yes. a prayer scarf. Yes. Things, things like Buy that. Buy a picture of the man of God and put it in your home. Uh-huh. Uh huh. An image of Jesus and then give them to buy. You know. These are all of the occult. Yes, it's part of it's part of the plan. So that this oh my goodness, and the other even thing the, I, even this image you see that they sh that they sell of Jesus, this white this white Jesus that they sell is Tammuz. Yes. It's the same Tammuz. Yes. Which is an antichrist figure, which is homosexuality because if you look mm -hmm. at Daniel chapter 11 verse 37 For neither him. shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all mm -hmm. so this Antichrist this Tammuz who is coming he shall not regard the God of his fathers that means the other gods which are Islam Hinduism Buddhism, Buddhism atheism all of those gods he shall not regard any of them mm. the worship the veneration of mary and all of that no he says neither shall he regard the god of his fathers nor the desire of women so this man has no desire of women mm. this antichrist is completely this lgbtq spirit yeah nor regard any god for he shall magnify himself above all and that's why you see the picture of this so-called Mary holding Tammuz, holding her son, and he's holding the a, whole world in his hand. With deception. Yeah. Jesus. And then uh, the other thing before even, I, 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 just, I just don't want to forget. One time I was with Satan, and then he was telling me that he hates a Christian who has decided to make prayer his lifestyle, and that he fights the prayers of the saints. Yes. Because prayer is communication to God. Yes. And he doesn't want Christians to communicate to God. Mm -hmm. And as he was saying that, he turned into a dragon. And he says, he told me that he swallows prayers, the prayers of the saints, and to weaken them and stop them from communicating to their father. When, they, when a Christian communicates to God, they cannot be deceived by the enemy. They, wow. can, they can disarm in the spirit. Yes. They can be able to see uh, and hear from God, and God can reveal to them the mysteries of his kingdom. Right. So he's constantly swallowing prayers, and prayer goes in form of incense. And uh, when a person is praying in the word, and the spirit is leading this person to communicate with God according to his word, that smoke... It is. It produces a sweet aroma before God, and yes. God receives it immediately, and He sends a response. Yes. Because God created man so that they can fellowship, so yes. that He can communicate with His uh, His creation, yes. so that He can interact. So what happens is God sends answers. He sends answers in various ways. He can just decide to to appear to this man in a dream. Mm -hmm. or in a vision yes. or said an angel with a message for this for this man who is praying yes. so what the enemy does he brings so many thoughts and so many activities in the person's mind it's the battle of the mind because this i told you about the spirit the spirit is where the heart and the mind is yes. so he brings a lot uh, of things in the mind and now as a person is focusing on praying they remember oh i have to pay this bill i have rent Oh, my wife disappointed me. Oh, why would so and so do such a thing? Actually, the spirit has the soul, the mind, and the the, and the, 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 intuition. the, the soul has the mind, will, and emotions. The, yes, the emotions. So the intuition is what is in the spirit. The, the spirit. Yeah. So the the enemy brings a lot of things going on in, in that person's mind, and then the person loses focus. Mm -hmm. When the person loses focus, they they their prayer now begins to meander, like, and now that is the prayer that the enemy swallows. It's and then like, the person feels sleepy or they, they want to do something, they divert from their calling, yes. from what they are supposed to do. Man is supposed to present himself before God all the time. At your place of work, you can speak in tongues. You can speak in tongues anytime. You can communicate to God anytime. There has to be a, an open heaven 
above every man all the time. That's when they walk in, 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 in success and prosperity. And that's when things happen automatically. That's when they command and things fall into place. That's when they also get ideas to create uh, businesses and things that generate income and good success. Mm -hmm. When, when their, their mind is tuned on to God. So what the enemy does, he brings so many things like entertainment, so many things uh, to divert the mind of man from God. Once that happens, then the person's prayer life goes down. Every time you sense as a Christian, your prayer life and the desire to read the Bible, the word of God going down, you know that the enemy is launching an attack. Yes. Because it is only when man is out of the presence of God that he ex experienced death, that mm -hmm. he experienced lack, mm -hmm. that he experienced misfortune, that he experienced all that. So all the time, a man is supposed to be in the presence of God for him to thrive. That's why you see, even if you're not praying, listen to worship worship music even if you're not listening to worship music listen to a someone if you're not listening to a someone pray in the spirit if you're not doing so find something to keep you in the presence it is while you're there that you're able to do exploits mm -hmm. that you're able to thrive yes. that you're able to walk in abundance that you're able to flourish that you're able to to walk in favor that you're able to 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 walk with to all to connect with great men in that a, you're able to challenge the kings and the rulers of this world in other words stop being a commercial christian yes a Not commercial I christian receive, is, just a, is just a christian who's saved on sunday yes all the other days sure you might you might even be living right that's not enough in luke 18 from verse 1 jesus says and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, mm. saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Mm. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Mm. And he would not for a while, but afterward mm. he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. Mm. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Mm. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? In other words, pray until you push through. Mm. Be prayerful, be a prayerful person. You will, you will have far more breakthroughs. Mm. You'll find that you don't need to sow a bunch of seed. You don't, you don't sow seed to, to, to prosper in this kingdom. And, mm. and, and sowing seed is good. Giving is good. Giving to ministries is great. But that's not how you prosper. Mm. True prosperity is righteousness. Yes. And a prayerful lifestyle. And mm. do you know it's interesting that in Revelation 8, verse 4, mm. the Bible says, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, mm. ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Mm. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar mm. and cast it into the earth. Wow. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and mm. an earthquake. Yes. So you see the response of God. Mm. He, oh, he, once he receives the prayers, oh my God. he instructs his angels, Mm -hmm. and they proceed and you get responses immediately so what we uh, need is continuous prayer in fact if you are bored jesus, of prayer you're bored of christianity look at jesus himself we always talk about the miracle signs and wonders but when you look at his lifestyle he was a prayerful man yes. he used to separate himself all the time and the bible says and there he with prayed the Father, yes. and he was always praying mm -hmm. and the bible tells us to pray without ceasing Everything the Bible is instructing us to do is for our own good. Benefit. For our own benefit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The Bible said he prayed and the and the 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 countenance of his face was changed. Yes. We need to do so. We need to You're, pray. I think your face should always be in that that countenance. Your countenance can change. Mm -hmm. That's how you should always be. You should be like that 24/7 365. And that doesn't mean that you start walking around and being a weirdo. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and you can telling even other people they're the not spiritual spirit. than you that you are. You can pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You can pray in the spirit. You're doing it for you. You're doing it for your relationship with God. You're, you, you're doing it to keep the incense flowing. Yes. So you can even pray in the spirit. You can pray from within. I can be with people and we are conversing, but I'm praying in my spirit. 
and this has helped me. I've seen a lot of change in my life. So many things have broken. People ask me, how did you survive escaping from the occult and stay alive? Hey, my sister, my brother, there's no magic to this. The only thing is for you to pray. Stay prayed up in the spirit. When you find a devil's agent and he finds you praying, they will scream and report themselves. They will expose themselves. The spirit of God will expose your enemies. And I'm telling you, this thing works. When you start keeping yourself in that, in that lifestyle of prayer, you find yourself having events that are leading you to move or progress from one place to another. You know, from glory to glory, from power to power. You know, you increase in knowledge and in understanding. You thrive, you meet the people you never expected to meet because every time you open your mouth to speak, the Spirit of God finds, finds expression through you. You speak words of wisdom. You begin to bless the hearts of men. You begin to speak life because you've always been in the presence. So whenever you open your mouth, people begin to sense that this person is speaking from a different angle. It's speaking what from kind another of, dimension. What kind of knowledge is this? How comes we've been with this information and we didn't know anything about it? It's because of the kind of lifestyle you devote yourself to. Don't spend your life in gossip. Don't spend your life in watching movies. Don't spend your life in things that are not going to build you, to build your connection with God. You need God. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. All right, so now in Psalm 91, we see, we see the prayer life and we see the results of the prayer life. True. I will repeat it again because it's worth repeating. Mm. In Psalm 91, the scripture says, He that dwells in the, in the secret, secret place, place of the Most High. Mm. Case in point, when Jesus was giving instructions on how to pray, mm. he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrite. Mm. Separate yourself. Go mm. into your prayer room. Mm. Shut the door behind you and there pray. Mm. Now, if you look in Israel right now, if you look at what is called the Wailing Wall, mm. you can see people publicly praying. Mm. And this was the hypocrisy that Jesus was talking about. Mm. Because in public, you, pur you purport yourself to be a holy man. Mm. But in private, you are the direct opposite. Mm. In other words, he wants private, secret place prayer. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't want this public prayer as if you are as if you are holy, but mm. and, and which is just an outward show. Mm. He said, but when you pray, separate yourself, go into your prayer room and there pray unto your father, which sees in secret, mm. and he will reward you openly. Mm. So what Jesus wanted was a level of genuine commitment and intimacy mm. with the father mm. that comes through the protocol of prayer. Mm. So he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It's a place the, that the you stay. Huh? He told the disciples to wait for him in the upper room, to wait in the upper room. It takes discipline for a person mm -hmm. to separate themselves from the activities that are ongoing in and wait in the room, just waiting on, on the Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. In fact, the scripture says, have you not seen, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not? Neither is weary, mm. there is no searching of his understanding. He mm. gives power to the faint, and to those that have no might, he increases strength. Mm. He says, even the youth will faint and be weary, and the young men will utterly fall. Mm. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, renew their, their strength. strength. They shall mount, mount up, up with wings as, as eagles. eagles. They shall run and not be weary. weary. They shall walk and, and not faint. faint. So what you're looking at is the things that are taking place in the prayer room, in the secret place of the Most High, that, that place of prayer, that you are beginning to run and not be weary. In other words, you're going to need to run in life, you're going to need to walk in life, and you are going to need to fly, to rise up with wings as an eagle. eagle. Yeah. So it is prayer that makes all of those things possible. Mm. And it is prayer that Satan is fighting against ferociously. Mm. He that dwells in the secret place, because it is this intimacy that Jesus came to restore. The death, burial, and resurrection of the, Son of, of the Son of God was a means to an end. That end is this, that men would walk with God again like Adam did mm -hmm. in the garden before he fell. Mm -hmm. That's why they call Jesus the second Adam, mm -hmm. because those who are like him walk with God. Mm, and he Adam also, walked with God. And he even gave an instruction. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and 
all these things shall be added. And that seeking of the kingdom of God takes place in the secret place. It didn't say he that visits the secret place of the Most High. He said he that yeah. dwells. You stay there. You tarry long in the place of prayer. Tarry long in that place until you begin to have encounters because encounters will begin to enrich your experience in your Christian life. Encounters will prove that the things that you are praying and the things that you are doing are in fact real. Mm. It's more, it's not a religion. This is reality for you. Mm. Encounters, they enrich the quality of your life. Mm. So he that dwells in the secret place, it's like, it's like a fish out of water. If you take the fish out of the water, you slap it on the table, that fish begins to struggle in life. Mm. That's why many men struggle in life. They're not in the secret place. Mm. Take that fish and put it back into its original environment, which is the presence of God, which mm. is the secret place. That man, that fish begins to flourish. Mm. Shall abide under the shadow of the, the Almighty. Almighty. Yes. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, refuge. and my fortress. Mm. My God in Him will I trust. trust. And then the results are listed now from verse 13 all the way to verse 16. Mm. In him, from verse 3, that is, all the way to verse 16. He said, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. These are your enemies, your unseen enemies, mm. spirit enemies, ancient spirits, Cleo and the rest of them, principalities mm. and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, various kinds and species of demon mm. that oppress men. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That's one. From the noise and pestilence. That's two. Mm -hmm. He'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Mm -hmm. That's another enemy. That's three. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Whoever shoots that arrow that flies by day, that's a fourth enemy. Mm -hmm. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. That's another fifth enemy that operates after the sun has gone down nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. That's the sixth enemy. So that's six different kinds of enemies that attack human beings. And this sixth one is the destruction that wastes at noonday, which mm. you mentioned in the last documentary, I think, that you used to... Um, Get choked in the night. No, and then in, I used and, to and, cause you, accidents. At noonday. At, yes. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. So that's 11,000 to one. That is the... Those are good odds, 11,000 to one believer, mm. but it shall not come near you. And this is Old Testament. Mm. Imagine what, can we, what we can do in the New Testament where two or three are gathered in his presence. He's in the midst. Mm. In his name, he's in the midst. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. That's, that's the lifestyle of prayer. Mm. When you live the lifestyle of prayer, you dwell in the secret place and you have made the Most High your habitation. Mm. That's where you live. Mm. You don't visit that place, you live in that place. Mm. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall, shall any, any plague, plague come near your dwelling. That's For why he shall give his angels charge over you, you to keep you in all your ways. Mm. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Mm. You'll tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under the feet dragon. the dragon who swallows prayers the dragon satan <laughs> you, you trample, trample him under him you trample he, you trample <laughs> on him he'll be defeated he'll be under your feet under your feet even during the pandemic you you'll be flourishing yes you you will not be burying your family members you would trample <laughs> upon the enemy, the lion and the adder, and the dragon. The oh adder, my God. Yeah, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. Adder is a very poisonous serpent, like a cobra, mm -hmm. but more poisonous. Mm. And he says, you will also tread upon the young lion, mm. and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Now in verse 14, it's the father speaking. Mm. And he says, because he has set his love upon me, mm. therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Mm. He shall call upon me and, and I, I will, will answer, answer him. him. I will be with him in trouble. 
I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's the Father speaking. Those are the words of the Father. There is no magic to long life. There's no magic to this thing. This thing is straightforward. There's no sowing seed and, and all that and, and the prophesying and all that. The thing is the thing is straightforward. Seek ye first the kingdom of God dwell and in, his righteousness. Dwell in the secret place. Dwell in the secret place and all these things shall be added unto you. Oh wow. God. Wow. Wow. So if this thing is not being taught in churches then we have a problem. And in the, in the Psalms, it tells us about those who are able to enter into the secret place. Because that place, it's extremely valuable Let's to be in that place. Let's talk about the dragon, man. Yes. I saw Satan turned into a dragon and he was swallowing prayers. He was swallowing prayers. And when a Christian would intensify, it would get so hot, burn him, and he would spit it. So you can cause the enemy to vomit everything that he swallowed that concerns you so in you the secret place. You can burn you him. You can burn him. <laughs> I like that idea. I like that. This musician sang about that experience. This is a story of my anger sending me higher, higher to the level. Fire burning, burning hotter, sending me higher. Then he shouts, Lord, have mercy. Then he declares destruction upon his fans. Fire burn them, fire burn them. Then the fans shout, burn them, fire burn them. I think, yes. were, you in the, were you in that? Uh, no, you were uh, in a video of uh, Necessary Noise where they were talking about fire also. Yeah, and the, and the things that they're talking about, they have relevance spiritually because life is spiritual. spiritual. So now, that secret place that, that men ought to dwell in, mm. where they become fruitful. Mm. where life begins to make sense. Yes. Yeah, that secret place is called, in Psalms chapter 24, it's called the hill of the Lord, Mount Zion. And from the first, from the first verse of Psalms 24, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, mm. the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Then he asks a critical question. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Then he gives clear instructions. He, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, the lifting up of your soul unto vanity is the pursuit of this world, is, is basically doing whatever, whatever it takes to succeed. To make do, it. Yeah, whatever it takes. To, you see a guy dressing up as a woman, yeah. Just because that's what it takes to succeed nowadays. Mm. Mm. You see comedians dressing up in as a, a man putting on a dress. Mm. He has, Politicians he, they uh, have, doing that uh, humiliating, humiliation ritual. They have lifted up their souls unto vanity. They're willing to do whatever it takes to succeed. You, you see a person compromising their integrity, mm. bribing a police officer. You mm. see a person who's applying for a job and, and she, you know, she's just innocently applying for employment but the boss says sleep well to get me. this job you have to sleep with me mm. and she, if she says yes she has lifted up her soul unto vanity wow. in other words she has traded that which is priceless in exchange for a few material material gains which are very little anyway which is not even worth a quarter of her value Mm. So who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, who has not compromised his integrity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. Mm that seek thy face, mm. O Jacob. So he's telling Jacob, he's telling the true children of Israel, you children of God, the world is forcing you to embrace homosexuality, but you children of God, abandon the world, abandon the influences of this world and embrace the Lord your God. You will be amazed how he provides for you. You'll be amazed how he transfers the wealth of the Gentiles into your hands without you having to compromise your integrity at all. I've been reading Psalms 91, but I had never connected it to this dragon that I saw. 
So now that I know that God has given me authority to trample upon this dragon, he's yes. finished. Hi. He's amen. finished. Hi. Amen. And amen. And that is exactly what the Bible prophesies. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her, her feet. feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Those 12 stars being the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Israel. Wow. Yes. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. Look, she was clothed with the sun. What does that mean? The glory of God. Mm. And the moon under her feet was the symbol of the moon symbolized Tammuz, Tammuz or witchcraft, Horus. sorcery, idolatry. Of course it comes from Tammuz. And guess what? It was under her feet. Wow. The moon and the sun, all of these, the powers of darkness were under her feet and upon uh, her head a seen, crown of 12 stars. Have you seen in, in movies uh, when they're static, they show this uh, boy, a little boy with a moon, like uh, with a moon symbol and like hooking yes, something. Yes, like he's fishing. Yes, like he's fishing. They're mm -hmm. showing Tammuz. Right, right there and then and in the beginning they have to show either colombia or they, they have to show yes, their the, god in other their words to, to honor her at yes. the beginning of every movie and then they for show colombia stars pictures. yes stars uh, moving around from the waters and going to the mountains right that's paramount pictures yes. you see there if you understand the symbolism oh you'll be god. able to see all around you all of these big companies these big corporations these captains of industry these politicians these leaders they are all worshiping the occult. They are all bowing down to the occult, but we don't have to. There's a better way. Dwell in the secret place. Hmm. Caesar said, I am the way. If you can, oh, if you can just set your eyes I, yeah, yeah. on him, Theophilus you can Theophilus sings escape. about that atmosphere where, where, where nothing is impossible and all disease are curable. Oh, he talks Amen. about that atmosphere that we create in the presence of God. Oh, my God. So, this, this world, it can be overcome. The occult system, yes, it might be functioning all around us, but that is no match for he that dwells in the secret, secret place. place. It's no match. It's no Please. match for you. Purpose if to you destroy be, the dragon. If you will be full of the word, that's why Jesus said, if... My word abide in, in you, and you abide in me. You shall ask the Father whatsoever you will, and he will give it to you. So, so, you know, when you see false prophets abounding, and you see they have crowds, just remember that in the book of Acts, during the days when Jesus had just ascended, and the Holy Spirit had come, and the disciples were preaching the gospel, Simon the sorcerer had the biggest church in Samaria. Mm. And all of Samaria, from the greatest to the least, were convinced and fully persuaded that this man was the great power of God. Mm. Simon the sorcerer, he had bewitched the whole of Samaria through witchcraft. Mm. And we have Simon the sorcerers today. Yes. This Mackenzie is one of them. Ezekiel. This Ezekiel is another one of them. Mm. And it, a, a true remnant is coming out to say, we don't want these false prophets. Mm. Sow a seed and God will meet your need. You don't have to sow a seed to any man of God. Mm. Jesus said, if you will abide in my word and my word abides in mm. you. In other words, get into the word the same way Erica and I are in the word right now. Everything is the word. If you will get in the word, mm. you can escape the powers of darkness. But if you attempt to pursue God, Without his word, hmm. you will be fed with idolatry. Mm. And there will be a false prophet available to deceive you, to derail you, to force you, to compel you, to sell your property, sell your land, and bring him the money in exchange for non-existent miracles. Remember, I told you that the system is looking for the blood of the saints, and you have seen how many people have been slain. The Bible says that Satan will deceive, if possible, the very elect. So in an attempt of people looking for God, without knowledge of who God is and what he requires them to do, they have been taken advantage of and that's why you're seeing them uh, buried, you know, people dying, starving to death. 
and children being locked up and denied access to food and in all in, in the name of looking for Jesus. So we, we don't have to complicate salvation because Jesus has given us the ticket, the manuscript, he has presented the word and he has told us exactly what we should do. So we should think straight and know that life is spiritual. Amen. Mm. In Matthew 25, Jesus is teaching, he says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Mm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, the church, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Then he says, Watch therefore. And watch is another word for pray. Watch and pray. Prayer. Yeah. Mm. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Now, there were five wise virgins, five foolish ones. So even in the church, I mean, leave alone the world, but even in the church, in the body of Christ, Jesus has already divided them among five wise and five foolish. That means 50% might be foolish. And he, and he says that the wise ones carried extra oil. What is the oil? What does the oil represent? Mm. The scripture says that the anointing which you have received of him teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie you shall abide in him. Why? The teaching, in other words, the oil is the knowledge of the word oh, of God. God. Mm. So the wise ones have the knowledge of the word of God. They really dig in. Mm. And because the word of God is the incorruptible seed, according to 1 Peter 23, it says, being born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So if the incorruptible seed of the Word of God has entered into you, then those seeds have germinated in your spirit and brought forth a life and mm -hmm. fruit. And it is that fruit that God wants to see. And if He doesn't see it, He counts you as a foolish virgin. And the foolish virgins will, are not going to make it. Mm, so if you don't like your life, test the ingredients. If the ingredients are not good, change the ingredients. Yes. And the ingredient to a better life it's through the Word of God it's through the word and of God. prayer. It's, there's no shortcut. You have to sow the Word in your spirit. That is the seed. Mm. Jesus said the seed is the Word of God. Mm. So you sow the seed of the Word of God into your spirit. You spend time in the Scriptures. He whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And the mm. seed is the Word of God that needs to be sown in your spirit for your deliverance. Mm. Amen. Okay. Yes, we'll be back in the part eight of the documentary, still continuing with my testimony. I love you so much, but Jesus loves you more. I remain Erika Mukisa Kimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha of Mami Zaya. Amen. And part eight will continue. We have so much to cover. We still have to cover the financial system that is coming. That is the system of the beast. And you see how the beast needs innocent life. You see the voracious appetite of this beast. Well, part eight of this, of this documentary will have a lot more details for you and we will share more of the word with you. Till then, may God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and do you good. We love you. God loves you more. Amen. God bless you from Baba Maisha, a.k.a. Baba Zion. Amen. <laughs>